I was just thinking about what to make, staring at my laptop. And then I realized that's been my desktop image for a long time, and I've never made it into a lure. I should make this into a lure with the big goofy fin up there with a little wispy spine coming off the back. That's beautiful. Molds, resin, wood, make the master. Big but not too big. Three piece, swim bait, resin. This is a big project. Better get started. That's what I'm talking about. That's like 92 millimeters, seven and one quarter inch. And probably after the door hinge joints are installed, could be getting close to eight inch. That makes this a legit swim bait. Inside of this large chunk of Tupelo is my bait. Spot on, fellas. Okay, back to carving. You know what? Shad are not skinny. Usually, like, you see them swimming around in schools, and I always think of like little skinny bait shiners, you know, when you think of shad, but they're not that. They can have some thickness down here. I always suggest that you leave your shads thick. There's a few too many lines on the top there to make sense of anything, but that's what I got. I'm gonna establish the eye hole right now. so I can carve around it. Got to get all those curves right, you know?
I wanted that one to be the tallest and then those two to be under it and then that one the lowest. Yeah, that looks good. As I go, I check each line just to see if it's off a little bit and decide to cut on either side if necessary. A little extra step of accuracy. But when you freehand these scales like this, it is very hard to get it perfect. You would have to be a computer to get that right, I think. Or you'd have to be Solar Vates. He, he does the best job I've ever seen when it comes to carving scales. Look up Solar Vates. Follow him. He was making bait making videos before me. Absolute OG master. Bader. I don't like that. It's weird. A cut that takes half a second to do sometimes can take like 30 seconds to do other times. Like removing these little edges, sometimes one of them takes forever because it doesn't want out. You just got to give each little thing its time and don't rush. It's a very long time later. My technique for carving these six scales. Well, I did a bunch of easy peasy cross hatching and just established where each scale is going to go. And now I'm starting to just cut the corners off of the top and bottom of each scale. That's what these things left are. And then I just have to go back in and cut those out. I think using that technique for shad scales, just shad scales, they're very diamondy. Shad scales are is a good technique. No matter how time consuming it actually is, it's a good technique. Maybe you guys can see that those are the old scales that's refinishing each scale giving the blade a little swipe past each one and that just makes each one flat instead of having those cut lines on every scale they're smooth so these scales are nothing but knife work. No sandpaper. Quite a bit of blade scraping though. Pretty much all these are scraped. It gives each scale some sort of different angle that light glares off of. Looks more natural. Let's get to cutting this bait into three pieces. I really should have cut the tail slot before cutting that off. That's, that's not going to be easy to put a slot in that tiny little piece. I got some new tools 
a joiner, a thickness planer, miter saw. And I didn't get them just to make fins better, but that's gonna, those tools are gonna help out a lot. With getting stock Tupelo wood, this thin, so I can just start cutting out fins from that thin of a material and it's all even. Convenience. I'm gonna need to make all of the slots. Yeah, I'm just gonna make them slots. I'm not gonna do like a weird a dovetail them or T-slot them or anything. Just slots for the fins. Getting a little too flappy on me. I can't believe I did that. I skipped that sanding drum over some scales right there. It's not that big of a deal. Another fantastic fit. That's two different sized owls. I'm not gonna need as much meat back here. There's not gonna be a hook coming off of this piece, so. It will need to be strong enough to support the weight of casting and hitting water in the fin back there, but. I'm gonna sand the joints back a bit. That's what I wanna do before I start gluing. So that I can get a steeper angle and there's more travel in the joint. That is so much more travel than what was before. I suppose now it's time. I'm gonna try not to make a mess. That leaves me with a little bit of gappage to fill in, which is fine. So from the outside, that just looks crooked as can be. Absolute garbage glue up. That's what it looks like from the outside, but on the inside, nice and even, that's gonna fit perfect. I just have to shape this stuff out here according to the body. That's gonna be an adorable little joint back here. All the proportions are smaller. I'm getting pretty stoked over here. Yeah, I always just end up putting lines. That's how I mark where it needs to go. Hey Kip, you like the shad? Kip Kip? Chelsea just made me bacon. That is how you know you made it in life. Your wife cooks you bacon. It's all a man needs. And a dog. This is a project I'm taking my time with, and it's starting to feel like it's been a lot of time, because it has been. That was just working on it here and there for two weeks, so I'm just gonna give the bait the time it needs and I'm gonna do it my best. This is a super finely detailed swim bait, and I just don't do a good job on these baits if, I, if I'm not constantly procrastinating. I just don't do a good job on these baits. That's how, I don't know why. Because I could structure my time and make it super efficient, and try to get it out as fast as possible. It's just never ended up looking as good. And that's the truth, so that's why, that's why I take my time. Or that's just an excuse to procrastinate a lot. 
Either way, it's on to the next bait. Comment below. You know what kind of fish that is? Because that's the next bait. On to the next bait. I thought that was going to sound like bait. Usually he snorts really loud and it's like and when he bites and I thought it would have been a good substitute for the word bait. But on to the next bait.